Greetings, Stan Halligan from Canta Games, and this is going to be chaos, people, so <laughs> fasten your seatbelt. This is going to be a look at the idea of team co-op. I really can't fit or manage the logistics of six player boards here. Plays just as well, in my opinion, although a lot of that's hypothetical. A lot of this is hypothetical. <laughs> um, but uh, it plays just as well with four. Um, the, the main reason for the team co-op is I think six player by traditional rules while possible. It's got a lot of downtime if you have a very social group that likes to put on their best English accents and have um, a very relaxing social time. I think it can work. But I think team co-op really will bring an edge and make that a viable game mode. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes here. Uh, you've heard this disclaimer before. I'm just going to bang along and try to get this out so that you can get a look at the gameplay. So what is team co-op? Team co-op is going to be players that can share resources and they're going to score an in-game scoring a mix of their scores, either an average or the lowest value between the two. And I'll go over that in a second. So we have Cavendish and York competing against Wessex and Asquith. And I'm going to only very briefly now talk about the sharing of resources. Money between 100 and 200 pounds can be given as a gift from your partner to you. It's not repaid. However the partner comes by it, special actions or whatever, that's their business. As long as they have the money, they can give you up to 200 pounds. You can also have money and or use special actions. So that's the money side of things. Servants, if a servant is available, I don't care how it's available, special actions, servants' quarters, if a servant is available, it can be loaned to support an activity at your partner's um, estate. When that servant is loaned, they have to come out of available service and they're going to go back to expended service. So there's a cost to loaning that servant. If that servant has a special ability, like a footman, because of a brushing room, is trained as a valet, they can come over and be a valet here at your estate. And again, these, these rules will get teased out as we go along. The most complicated uh, set of rules relates to guests. When we think about our gentry deck, consider it like a 19th century Rolodex. But Victorian etiquette required that everybody in our Rolodex, we had to be properly introduced to, properly connected, if you will. They're frequently in the literature, they're called connections. And so when we are going to share guests, so if I'm hosting an activity here at Cavendish and I I want a York guest to come complete an activity, and I'm not talking theme here, I just, I need a lady, or I need a gentleman to come. Well, it, it's not possible for them to just uh, pull an Earl out of their gentry deck and say, hey Earl, go over to the Cavendishes. There's no relationship between every member of that Victorian Rolodex that York has and me. So where is the connection? Well, our families are intimate, and that means that our family members are the ones that can go over and complete activities for our partner, for our, our teammate. And in addition to our family members, we have starter guests. And what are starter guests? For those not familiar with Obsession, you're waiting anxiously for your package next March. The crown indicates an intimate guest. That forms our starter guest pool. We start out with two of them. There's many more that are tucked in that casual guest deck. These represent people that are intimate acquaintances of the family. They're intimates of the family. They're more than acquaintances. They're close friends. And because the Cavendishes and the Yorks are close with each other, just these types of guests of modest reputation that are family close friends, they're almost in our extended circle of friends, so they too can come over. If they do come over to an activity, all their favors go to the hosting family. That is not true of family members. Except for the Earl, let's talk about these. All three top favors can is optional. can go back with the York family or it can stay with the hosting family. And uh, let, me, let me get my orientation right. If I'm loaning these to the York family, they can stay with the York family, the invitations, or that 100 pounds, 
or they can come back to the Cavendish family. But the three bottom favors, the dismissal can only happen with in my household for the lady of the house. She can't go over there and dismiss a guest for the Yorks. That's like going over to your neighbor's house and disciplining their kid. <laughs> that doesn't go over real big. Uh, the admirer bonus, if the young lady is seen with a reputable gentleman, that benefits the reputation of the Cavendish family, not if she was over with the York family. And being the heir to an estate of significance, that reputation benefits the Cavendish family and doesn't travel. The money is optional for the Earl. He doesn't have two uh, potential favors. The money can either stay or go. So you get a lot of ability to manipulate where that money favor is going to end up. So in other words, even though let's say I might send the Earl over to help my partner, the Yorks, complete a critical activity, maybe the Yorks just needed to complete that activity for the prestige. I'm short on money. I can then take that money home with me when the Earl comes back. They would go out of my active hand and they would come back and go to my discard pile. So just like with a servant, there's a cost associated with these guests. I'm not going to spend a ton of time sort of ruminating over the objectives. Uh, that, that's a part of the game that those who've played it know well. Uh, the top three objectives between the teammates are scored. They certainly can talk about them. We can't flip them over and reveal them. I'm doing this for filming. But um, if, if you want to have a little table talk to mention that you had a particular interest in the tennis court, well, go ahead and do that. But <laughs> one of the reasons that we don't have consecutive spots for teammates is that any table talk can be to the advantage of your opponents. Let me just talk briefly about end game scoring because that guides a lot of our strategy. So I'm not going to dive deep. I'm just going to make the point that most of these are averaged. So like our estate values are averaged. Our guest values are totaled and averaged. So most of these things are averaged. However, that is not true of reputation. In the case of reputation, the lowest reputation value of the two estates becomes the reputation value for the team. The team is going to fill out one column here. And that is going to prevent somebody just sacrificing all their reputation to try to make one of the two players super powered. Nope. It's like a, I think it's like done in between two cities. Uh, it's the lowest value reputation. You have to take care of both members of the team. Let's get started. I'm about to start here, but I, I didn't mention the draft because we have first player here and it's going to rotate this way. We had the draft start there. We had the cook go, then the useful man, then the head house maid, and then I took a second lady's maid. One of the reasons is that I'm strong with the Yorks on footmen, and because I can borrow servants when I need them, ladies' maids can often be a bottleneck. Boy, ladies' maids, being short on ladies' maids can just be crippling. So I've decided to bulk up there rather than go for the other special servant, which would have been the hall boy just to give us the ability to share footmen, share ladies' maids, and if he can get the brushing room, then perhaps I can have three valets over there and we can have extra valets in our mix as well. Turn one, we're going to begin with that open courtship. We're going to flip a theme tile and find out it is a state that is near and dear to the likes and interests of Charles and Elizabeth Fairchild. First turn for Cavendish, because I have a partner who's heavy in footmen and flipping this main gazebo will be essential for one of us staying even with our opponents as far as paying attention to an estate courtship. I'm not going to lead with this tile or with this tile, which that, that would both be a logical first move. I'm shopping first in the market. I think that's something to take advantage of. My favorite tile, the servants' quarters, is out there. And so we have the Earl and Lady Sarah Lewis on the Bowling Green and we're going to realize 600 pounds which is the exact cost of my favorite tile of all time. The turn for Asquith. Asquith is going to get busy after getting that 
main gazebo flipped and getting even with the state. I say even because there's nothing in the builder's market and a drawing room came out after that purchase by Cavendish. There's nothing in the builder's market that's going to provide an advantage yet to anybody competing for the estate courtship. So the bare minimum is the main gazebo has to be flipped by one of the teammates. And Asquith's going to do that, but for another reason. The Asquith has the cook. Now the cook, we're, if you recall, has the ability to allow guests two levels above the family's reputation to attend the activity because of their reputation with food. And I don't have any prestige guests yet, but I can always get prestige for an event uh, if uh, Mrs. Puggins works her magic. So there's two reasons for the cook. One is the courtship is, uh, uh, reason of flipping this tile. But the second is to get after that prestige guest and hopefully get a prestige guest that maybe I can play next turn. Could be very powerful. So what do we have here? We have the Dowager, which is the family advantage of Asquith. We're going to have the Dowager and her son. That is 300 pounds. And we have one reputation from the Dowager and one reputation from the Cook. And we have a second level invite. And a little higher than I would like, although it's just a superb guest. A little higher than I would like. I'll have to rush to try to get to level three so I can make a big prestige play. It goes into my active hand. And we break this down. Flip this, good for courtship. And this player has their eye on the carriage house. Now just take note, this is a early prototype version of the carriage house. There is no premium and the graphics are different and the description is different. So the carriage house allows you to go one up or one down on the uh, count of people. So for example, if I use the carriage house, I could invite three ladies or one lady, but I do need to deploy a footman there or I can also deploy a hall boy, so just purchase that for 300. We're over to York turn, and something very big happened. The English Garden came into the market, front side victory points of two. That is a game changer. It would be my assessment that whichever team lands the English Garden or builds the English Garden is going to win season one courtship. So uh, that is going to impact what York does. York sort of has an obligation in discussion with their partner. There, there is table talk permitted. The interesting thing about never having sequential partners or teammates is that table talks permitted can't be revealing cards, but you can be talking through strategies. But of course, that's going to be information that your opponents might use. Anyway, York has an obligation to flip this main gazebo tile. And along with that, he is going to collect some money towards that English Garden objective. So they get um, 300 pounds here. He's going to bank that 300 pounds, uh, again, for that objective. We get one point of reputation over here for the Lady Mary Russell. And we get a second level invite. And not as useful a guest, very powerful, very useful toward the end game but not a, a guest that'll be used for a while. One of the reasons that the head housemate is an attractive servant to have. We're here at Wessex's turn, and Wessex is going to get after some money as well. They're gonna be able to pull 500 from this event and get a screened invite because of the ability of the head housemaid um, to avoid any negative guests. So let's take a look at what that invite is. Interesting. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of American heiresses early in the game. Great source of income. You just have to manage around the negative reputation, but that is an excellent guest. It confers victory points. They have a little bit of the family advantage of a path of, of money without repeating tiles. I think I'm going to pass on the American heiress and go with that gentleman. And are we going to spend that money or are we going to bank it? I think we have to bank it. It's right now an English garden sweepstakes, although there's some nice tiles out there. Um, gonna bank it. Turn two, Cavendish. 
Going to flip the private study tile, which is going to be a village fair. There's going to be a village fair next turn. That's going to be 300 pounds. Pick up 100 pounds from the air. Going to look at two. Very nice. No service money for both these gentlemen. I think I will uh, go with Reginald Hopkins. No real difference. Set up for the village fair, which those of you not real familiar with the game, village fair, when uh, that happens on the round track, you get two reputation and 300 pounds if you've done your due diligence as patron of the local village to plan for a successful fair. Here we are in Asquith's turn. Asquith would have gone and played the Bowling Green, but their uh, footman is unavailable to make that happen. Really, in my experience, two footmen or at least some combination of a servant's quarters or an underbutler are absolutely necessary for, for a game. It's just too difficult to get by with one footman. Here's an example where they could have accumulated some money with which they could lend 200 over there and that would be enough to get the English garden. I still think that that, I have to, I have to you know, anybody who thinks that this is a light game, the permutations, you have no idea. It'll be interesting to see. He's got the bowling green. It's likely he's going to be able to get the English garden, but it would have been a play here if you had the um, footman in order to go ahead and acquire some more money. But as of right now, it's going to be planning for the village fair as well. We're going to go ahead and take 100 pounds from the young man, screen two guests with the lady of the house. We got some good guests coming out early. I'm going to go with this gentleman here and put that in our active hand, break down, end of turn. So here we are with York, and yes, indeed, he's going to be able to make a play for that English garden. If you take a look, uh, he's gone ahead and rotated his service. He has the advantage of the two footmen, and you can see here his opponent over here would not even have had that footman and no ability to use special action and refresh that footman. So there is a strong position that comes from having that second footman early on when you're playing a combo of the estate and the sporting tile, which require that level of service. So the uh, lady of the house is going to have Major William Hawes to the bowling green. We're going to net 300, gives 600 there. And we have two reputation. And she sees two guests and keeps one. And here we have another American heiress. And this guy being 200 pounds, she being 500 pounds with a loss of reputation, but only two. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> I probably should take that American heiress. Um, and we go ahead and break down. And we have 600, that is an 800 tile. We have only 100 to borrow over there, so we put the 600. Oh, this is interesting. We're gonna get the loan from our partner of 100 pounds. So we have 700. That costs 800. The useful man can discount that purchase down to 700. But if the useful man is used there, he won't be available for the 200 pounds that he can generate on the private study tile, whether it's flipped or not. So should he trade away two points of reputation for the money? I think so, just but the math works out better. So we're going to have 700, and then we're going to use a special action, go to the money lenders in London, bad for the reputation. We lose two points of reputation, that gets us 800. Put that in the bank and we grab the definitive English garden. And that preserves the use of the useful man for the village fair, which is preferred. Over to Wessex. And Wessex is bummed out, but I believe the best way to handle getting behind critically in any courtship is never to try to chase the courtship but to go in another direction and anticipate 
that the next courtship is going to be something that you can have a significant lead in. And with prestige tiles out in play, that to me says, let's spend that 500 and get into that drawing room, which is 700. So uh, let's set up their turn. We got a rotate service, and I'll be right back. Well, it's sort of like a, uh, a mother-son event. I think this is our third mother-son event uh, in the private study. So we're going to pick up 100 pounds from <clears throat> the son and heir. We're going to look at two, keep one on the guests. Ooh, oh my. Now we have two negative guests, a couple of interesting things. This is one of the negative guests that doesn't have negative reputation at the end of the game because he's a pauper and he's a war hero. Um, so the only negative side of things is that uh, he's impoverished. She's not a good egg at all, but she brings a prestige guest. We're keeping her, sorry. Goes into active hand. We'll have to get rid of her before the end. We'll return that to the deck, break this down, and we're going to make the purchase we planned on with the help of our partner because I have 600. I do not have any reputation, which is sort of bad. <laughs> So I have nothing to trade away, but I have 100 pounds coming from my partner. I'm going to pick up that drawing room. And now that's making a futures play for perhaps a prestige courtship in the future. Drawing room is positive front side victory points as only a state and prestige have. Service does as well, but as far as tiles, it can be played. Here we go on to a village fair round. And a village fair round, we're going to go ahead and the first thing we always do is we rotate our service. And because I have flipped the private study tile, I will net 300 from the village fair and two additional reputation to get me to level two, which is nice. That makes me think I want to do something with these tiles here to give me that path. I always think it's critical to have a path that is... Uh, more prestigious renovated spaces that sort of reflect your climb and reputation. Hate to replay tiles unless I have a very specific purpose. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to leverage Cavendish's reputation a little bit and try to get ahead on reputation. So I'm coming here. I'm going to pick up 100 pounds from Miss Ann Harlow. Gets me to 400 there. And then I'm going to pick up three reputation. One, two, three. And in addition, we have an invite. An unscreened one could be dangerous. It turns out to be the opposite of dangerous. One of those rare casual guests that allow you to invite a prestige guest. Wonderful to have. I'll tell you what, does that make that mandatory because playing this guest in there gets me two prestige guests. I am going to do what I can to get that. And so I am going to trade away, use a special action. I'm going to pick up an additional 100 pounds. I, I have no help that I can get from my partner. Now my partner, if they had reputation, they they could trade away their reputation to give me pounds, but remember the lowest reputation scores, so I'm going to want both of us to climb upwards in reputation and hopefully both get to max. So I'm paying that 500 to get that heritage suite, and I now have a nice little prestige guest engine, which I plan on exploiting to the very fullest. Whenever I look at an estate like this and I'm in, and near the end of the first season, I, I have no path. Just as I was talking about the path, it's somewhat critical that I get into some of these tiles that are going to allow me to, uh, to, to progress without reusing tiles. And so let's get into this bowling green so that we got some purchase power. Oh, we needed to rotate our service. We need, because we have the village fair, we need to take 300 for the village fair and two reputation. And now provide service here, provide service here. Uh, I'm going to use Mrs. Puggins again. One of the reasons that we can use the cook and be, have her be useful in every activity is these aren't just afternoon activities. People don't travel to country estates 
and then leave right after, you know, having a little recreation out on the lawn, uh, they stay. Uh, you know, it's not uh, 19th century England. You're not getting from location to location quickly. Typically, people stay for an extended period. So she is going to uh, you work her magic for the evening meal. So what do we have here? We have 300 pounds plus 100 pounds there. That's 400. This is a nice bit of money there for Asquith. We're going to pick up two reputation and get them over to second level, which is good because otherwise I would be short a guest next turn. I have a second level guest that I need to use. I did forget the reputation for Mrs. Puggins, did I not? We'll add that on and go ahead and break this down. Flip the bowling green tile. And we are going to make purchase. And the purchase that I'm eyeballing, um, I would be inclined to the smoking room. That butler's pantry, nah, I, can't, I can't spend it on the butler's pantry. Um, I am going to take the smoking room. It's just, you know, it gives me a little bit of a counter, not a counter, a compliment to the prestige play here. We're sort of locking up prestige by doing that. I like that. That's going to cost me 500 pounds and a turn. So we're over here at York, and, you know, York has a bit of a reputation problem. Trailing badly behind my partner. I don't want to be the uh, the drag that brings things down. Let's go ahead and rotate service I do not get to enjoy The benefits of the village fair that normally come from flipping that tile But I can put my useful man there and that basically is you know I haven't done the proper planning with the family But just by sending my handyman down to the village fair I can help out and generate a little income from that village fair. So that's a nice use there. Well, here I am with York, and I want to play that private study, even though there's only one more village fair. That'll be a powerful thing to get 500 pounds from that village fair because of my useful man when that comes around. I also have two family members that I can play, and then I'm getting very near to a pass. So I'm going to take a point of reputation here, because I'm not going to be making a purchase this turn. No, I'm not. And then here we're going to have an invite. Oh, man, I'd love to see him. That's great news. Break this down. Okay, over here with uh, uh, Wessex on their last turn of this season, we're going to rotate service. He's got even a worse reputation problem, but he does get two from the village fair along with 300 pounds, so that's uh, positive. So um, Wessex really needs to get their reputation up. They have two ladies that they can play, but they're going to lose some reputation here, but gain reputation here. But they have a problem is that they're using their housekeeper to stand in for the missing ladies maid here. And they don't have a housekeeper here, but they really want to make that play. So they reach out to Asquiths and say, the Asquiths, can your housekeeper come over and help out? Now, I could do a lady's maid as well. It's sort of six one, half dozen the other. But, well, you know, now that I look at it, Asquith might like to play that front parlor herself. So why not do the ladies' maid? So I'm not sure that Asquith has the right mix of guests, but let's let's just go ahead and borrow this ladies' maid. Come over here, young lady. So I'm going to stand this ladies' maid up to remind me that that goes back to expended service for Asquith. I now enjoy here one reputation, but I do pick up a second a prestige guest. And dang! The big hitters are coming out. It's not what I would have hoped for at this stage of the game, but we will take the gentleman, and we'll pick up 100 pounds here, and we'll break this down. This goes to expended service, and she goes to expended service over there. And we have 400 to spend, and we are going to gobble up this butler's pantry. Butler's pantry gets us into an under butler, which is very much... Uh, 
a useful servant in a big way. Goes to the discard pile. So the courtship is going to be won by the Yorks. The Yorks are going to take a victory point card. You normally wouldn't see this, but I'm going to do that. Three victory points or a refresh action. And the York is going to take the young lady because of her ability to invite a prestige guest. Whoops, I think I lost my microphone. Hopefully you heard me okay. The reason that you might say, I want to come over here and make a point might say, my gosh, why am I ever taking that gentleman? Well, remember, he's a prestige guest to Fleur de Lis, and he will trigger the admirer bonus of the young lady if you were to take him. So taking Charles Fairchild essentially is worth a full level of reputation if the young lady of the house goes to an event with him. Uh, there's no such bonus that kicks in, but obviously she's the more social one of the family and she's fairly well connected. So it's not as simple as it seems. Uh, I think the young lady is maybe a little bit more powerful than the young man, and that's sort of what the literature shows all through the 19th century. I have a little favoritism there for Elizabeth, but can be very powerful in conjunction with the young lady. So that is going to be... but. <laughs> going to put Elizabeth in the pile there. So that's the end of season one. We are going to rotate this marker over here to start season two. Start of season two. Moved to round five. Let's have a new revelation of a theme. The passions and interests of Charles and Elizabeth Fairchild. Sporting. Well, we're starting with Wessex as the first player and they're very happy. Because their family advantage, they chose the tennis court. They're currently the only player with two sporting tiles. Get that tennis court flipped. That's going to be three points. It's going to be a tough, tough position to be in. Although, I have to point out, the marketplace has options. But uh, Wessex really doesn't have an option when it comes to his gentry deck. He's going to have to reclaim his deck, refresh his service, and pass this turn. And he's going to hire on the pass. Now, he's got this guest, which he needs to worry about. He was thinking about a hall boy, but he has an underbutler, so he has a way to navigate around the restriction of playing this guest. But at level four, he'd be able to play that guest, and so he's going to go if he had a cook. So he's going to go for a cook and a footman on his hire during his pass and turn his over. So here we are with Cavendish. Cavendish has decided to use these two guests, they're the final two guests they can use, but he wants to get into that tennis court. Now, there could be some argument made to get the billiards room, since the billiards room has such a compelling backside victory points, but there's no way that billiards room gets played this season, um, or at least a very small chance that that billiard room gets played this season. So. They're going to focus on the less expensive tennis court. So what do we have? We have 100 pounds that comes from Reginald Hopkins. We have, look at this, two, two, count them, two prestige guests. Oh, and we got our promo in there. Uh, both playable, particularly given their reputation, both very playable guests. They may not go for the cook like they're thinking when they pass next turn. So that goes there. And we go ahead and clean up, goes into the discard pile, and we're going to borrow 200 pounds from York. That 300 pounds is going there. The tennis court is acquired, has the reputation to play the tennis court and make sure that they stay even there. It'll be interesting to see if anybody thinks they can do something with the billiard room. Let's go ahead and pop a new tile in the marketplace and step back. It's the Lionheart Suite. So here we are with Asquith, and Asquith has um, this one lady wants to play the front parlor and needs assistance. So fortunately, by passing the last turn, everybody is available. in Wessex's deck. So, the two young ladies of each of these houses, probably 
dear friends who spent summers together are going to be in the front parlor for a game of whist and we're going to get three reputation and the two young ladies each have an unscreened invite now this is uh, important because we're going to put this guess we're going to put this invite there and this invite here because as we discussed at the beginning of this film that is an optional thing for her to take back the guest or leave the guest here so the one that stays with Asquith is this young lady not bad no service requirement with an invite and the one that can stay or go is a lot of money Sir Richard Beeston now you know I should I should really read the the flavor text but I haven't trust me I, I, I spent a lot of time on it I hope I know people do read them I'm only doing it for the interest of time the well-traveled Sir Richard loves music and is known for his gallantry and hospitality anyway he's money and they're a little better situated for money they got the the two green tiles um, so I think that this is going to stay here with Asquith and then she is going to go back just to see how we handle this this is actually this mess here is my active hand and now there's one card in the discard pile she goes to the discard pile break this down turn over I do have 200 to spend actually turn not over if there comes along a service if there comes along a service uh, courtship man Asquith has that locked up now he's got to start getting into some estate tiles turn over here we are with York and I'm not one to replay tiles if I can avoid it, but I can't really avoid it. And there's a real good reason not to do this. I'm going to pick up 400 in pounds, and I'm going to get two reputation, as well as a second level invite, and a very, very nice one indeed, Thomas Earl of Kellynch. Now, the reason that... Um, the reason that I wanted to go ahead and get into some of that money is because I want to snap up this billiards room. I don't think it's going to be anything that I'm going to be playing anytime soon, given that I'm a reputation level one, but it takes it out of the hands of our opponents. And who knows, maybe we have a double sporting courtship uh, that comes up and that could be a power play. So we are done. We're going to break this down. And it might be good to go ahead and pay 300 which is a great price to get that billiards room. Okay, we uh, look at this. We go to round six where we talk about an objective card. I'm going to tell you what, folks. I don't have time and I haven't paid any attention to objective cards. Um, I'm really sort of going to ignore them. They're really not a significant part of demonstrating the team co-op gameplay. And it's going to slow us down. So I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> And so I get over here, and uh, I've already got my ideas for the Wessex turn, and that is to play this main gazebo, to use the head housemaid to screen that invite there, and to get some reputation from these two in order to get me out of this horrible place so that I can flip that tennis court, which is it's going to be on me to do to keep even with my opponents. So uh, no money is coming here. Three reputation. One, two, three gets us to second level we have a look at two keep one invite remember I have the cook so this is pretty important and look at that I could have been locked out yet again for a while but no I'm gonna be able to get into her next turn and that's a lot of money and you know what there is a riding stables that's come you know the problem with courtship with green there's front side negative victory points <laughs> it really requires two plays to be effective but I'm gonna keep her take her you know not often she gets rejected and sent to the bottom of the deck but 
In this case, she has. There is no purchase that takes place. End of turn. I'll break down. So uh, I'm unable to play these two guests. I do need to play this tennis court in round seven in order to stay even on the courtship, but it's going to be a pass turn. I'm going to claim my deck back, and we are going to hire on a pass. And with, I'm not going to go the cook. I'm going to get myself a useful man. And I'm not going to do, you know, if I were following objectives, I would go ahead and pick up a lady's maid here, but I'm, I'm, we're not doing that. Um, I'm going to grab a hall boy. People, you are going to see why this is going to be so cool. <laughs> this is going to be so cool. I want to get into this smoking room here. Okay. I got my under butler. I have, I'm sorry, I have my butler. I have my one valet. I'm missing a valet. I don't have a valet over there, but I got an under butler. Let's put a bookmark in that because Mrs. Puggins is going to enable us to have uh, Alistair and the Marquess of Kent come along with this gentleman because we're going to come over here and we're going to say thank you Wessex under butler for coming to visit I must stand that gentleman up and now look what we have put together man this excess <laughs> excites the hell out of me so we have 200 pounds we have seven eight reputation so the that's a whole level of reputation. That's five, six, seven, eight reputation. And we're going to break this down. I'm going to put that back over there. Goes in the discard pile. And we flip this. We have 200 pounds. And we would like a path. You know what? I'm so far ahead in reputation, I've got to liberally use my reputation advantage here. So I'm going to spend 100 and I'm going to bring this breakfast room to give me a path and also equip us to be uniquely positioned. I mean, they have the Heritage Guest Suite, which by the way, I got to use, to be uniquely positioned to, to sort of control um, the early stages of a essentials courtship. So that looks great, like that play. I'm going to return this under butler. Come on, young man. He goes into expended service over there. I want you to see something particularly powerful. Here, I haven't played the front parlor. I'm languishing on reputation. Uh, I don't have any guests that I can invite to that front parlor, but my partner passed last turn. And so there is a starter guest who brings money and the young lady who are going to be my guests, my visitors in the parlor. Gonna play a little game of whist. Going to realize 100 pounds, three reputation, get me off the schneid, and an invite. Now this actually, since I haven't passed yet, I could actually use him now that I'm second level to engineer another play. So I'm going to keep that guest here, and these two guests are going to go back. Forgive the mess. I'm trying to walk and chew gum, which you know is not my strong point. Put that there, and that's the discard pile with those two ladies. Break this down. We have 200 to spend, and if we had a competent host who was restocking the market, I think they're going to bank that 200, but let me swing around. Oh, the smoking room is so delicious looking. You know what? It's going to bank that money, and we'll go to Wessex. It'll be round seven, getting to the end of the second season courtship. 